Yeah, that's uh, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about too, Ted, was just this, uh, you know, I guess it started to pop up a little more, at least on my radar, was you get this kind of goofy scenario where having you're getting kind of that gram per pound of protein that you mentioned is a great way to likely create an environment where you're more satiated and likely going to eat less overall energy. And then if you're trying to lose fat, obviously that's going to come off of your body. Um, but we also see kind of a similar satiation effect or hunger suppression effect when you get very low protein diets, like less than 10%, I think if I'm not mistaken. So there appears to be kind of this, like this window where if you're like, say between 10 and 20% protein, where it's just like the perfect combination to get you to overfeed on carbs and fats. Um, so that's like one kind of question or thought. And then the follow-up would be then let's take a peek at this very low protein diet. And when I think of that, I think of some of those folks who are like, it almost seems like they're accelerating the same problem you'd get in like an elderly population where they get to a point where they're losing a lot of muscle mass, their bones are possibly thinning and they're highly at risk for like falling, getting injured. And then that being the reason that they end up eventually dying versus you're having a strong skeletal muscle system, a strong skeleton in their older age, which they're, I would guess more likely to have if they're hitting the higher end of the protein targets versus, you know, way at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. That, those are all really great points and uh, protein consumption and <clears throat> is definitely on a U-shaped curve. And at very high protein percentages, we see humans automatically eating less calories all the way up to about 50% of calories from protein. Uh, but then also on very low protein percent diets, people automatically eat less, especially if, especially if you can get down to about 5% protein, which is your fruititarian diet of just, you know, 30 bananas a day or the all potato diet. If you can get to about 5% or lower, um, a lot of mammals just kind of give up on eating because they realize it's how kind of pointless it is. You know, like uh, Dr. John Speakman just published a study a few days ago where they, they drove mice and rats all the way down to, I think it was mice, well, all the way down to 1% protein. And these mice literally ate way less and lost a lot of body fat uh, because they just kind of give up. Like it's really almost pointless. And so a very interesting satiety hack is to eat the extremely low protein fruititarian diet. Um, I think that you could maybe pull that off if you're doing enough resistance exercise uh, to demand that your body maintain a little bit of lean mass and bone density. Um, but sort of in the same way that just by increasing protein in the diet, we see people get more lean mass and bone density, even without exercising, I'm worried that at these very low protein diets, you're just going to automatically get some amount of uh, osteopenia and sarcopenia that you can't correct just with more exercise. And it's probably going to be net detrimental to longevity and long-term health. So, um, and then of course, there's, a, there's this center part in the U where you absolutely maximize eating and you it's the optimal fattening ratio. And I'm just absolutely fascinated with the whole science of obesogenic rat chow and building these diets that's designed to make an omnivore mammal eat the highest amount of calories possible. And it seems to be at about a 10% protein with 45% carbs and fats equally. And you just get this perfect combination <clears throat> of overeating, especially if the carbs and fats are high energy density, like refined carb, refined fat, 45% each, 10% protein. That is going to be optimal growth ratio for a rat or a human or whatever. And then if you look at the list of human junk foods and you break down the macros, it just fits in there perfectly. It's like pizza and candy bars and little Debbie's and donuts and all these things are, you know, like 10% protein. And then the rest of the calories are 50, 50 refined carb, refined fat. And then you have all these cafeteria diet studies where we just feed human junk food to rats and mice. And you can basically just fatten any omnivore mammal with these ratios. And it's just so amazing to me that that's where we've, we've almost 
landed there in the in America at peak obesity macros almost you know if we just got our protein maybe one or two percent lower I think we'd like win a prize like for absolute <laughs> maximum fattening we're almost there we're <laughs> we're number one yeah that's really interesting about the the the, the very very low protein diets um and almost like when you say like giving up is it almost like a, a species like just they, they feel like they're they just don't even care anymore. Like you almost overdo it on carbohydrates. And, um, from being somebody who's tried many, many different ways of eating, including at one point, just eating fruit for a while, that is not only a digestive nightmare, that is a blood sugar nightmare. So if anybody's thinking about trying that, I highly recommend against it. Um, have you ever experienced that Dr. Naiman or had patients that tried that just eating lots of bananas and mangoes and spending? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I was raised Adventist and vegetarian, and I just used to have, what I had was crazy hypoglycemia. Yeah. So I would eat something that was just carb and very low protein or fat. And maybe three hours later, I would get so shaky that I thought I was going to die. I mean, I would just, uh, that was a, that was like almost a daily thing for me. Okay. And, and that is the thing that I think really, uh, in terms of fixing my health with a more protein, lower carb diet, I think escaping those hypoglycemic episodes was the biggest thing for me. So I, I hear what you're saying, that blood sugar roller coaster, not everybody can ride that thing and feel good. <laughs> or do they need to, you know, it's just like you're saying, when you, when you have more protein and fat on board, you know, and so much less carbohydrates, you certainly are going to have a more, you know, stable blood sugar. Um, but I, you know, I'm with you that the idea of prioritizing protein uh, I was really surprised when, you know, reading through our um, guidelines, you have a whole chapter on sarcopenia uh, for old, the elderly is still the same as it is for a healthy 18 year old male, you know, the point, point uh, oh eight per kilogram. So we're telling someone who's, you know, like you said, who potentially needs more protein, we're telling them they like 44 grams a day is fine or 50 grams, you know, which is just to me, it's just insanity. Because if you're only getting 50 grams of protein a day, what else are you eating? Carbs and fat.